All these new cameras are starting to offer 422 color recording options, but what does that actually mean? Let's look at how increasing chroma sampling will improve quality by recording more vivid colors in your videos. Hey everyone, Camber here showing you how to use your camera to make good videos. So if you're new, consider subscribing and also joining my private Facebook group where I can better answer your filmmaking questions. But what is color sampling? Well, also known as chroma sampling, the simple version is that in order to cut down on file sizes, most cameras don't actually record all the color information in an image. Instead, color information is copied from nearby pixels, and the amount that's being copied is typically represented in a ratio form such as 422 or 420. And the reason cameras can get away with copying this color information is because our eyes are much less sensitive to changes in color than they are to changes in brightness. But in order to understand what's happening to your video with various amounts of color sampling, let's take a closer look at the pixel level. Each pixel contains luminance, or luma information, which is brightness, and chrominance or chroma information, which is color. When referring to how much chroma sampling is taking place, a ratio system such as 444 is used that references a block of eight pixels arranged in two horizontal rows of four. The first number indicates the number of pixels with luma information. Because our eyes are more sensitive to brightness changes, the luma value of every pixel in both rows is recorded as represented by the four. And the second number tells you how many of the pixels in the top row will have chroma information, which in this case is all four. And the third four refers to the chroma information recorded on the bottom row, which is also all four. In the case of 444, no chroma subsampling is taking place. A 16 by 9 4K image has nearly 8.3 million pixels. And when using the 444 color option, you're recording all luma and chroma, or brightness and color information for every one of those pixels. And as you can imagine, this takes up a lot of space. And this color option is typically found in cinema cameras with raw recording capabilities. So then when we move on to 422, once again, the four tells us that the brightness information of all pixels is being recorded. The first two tells us that the color information of only two of the pixels in the top row is now being recorded, and those colors are now being copied to the adjacent pixels. The second two tells us that the same thing is happening on the bottom row with the color information of only two of the pixels being recorded and then copied to the adjacent pixels. In this type of chroma sampling, your camera is only recording 50% of the original color that it sees. And this really reduces file sizes compared to the 444 options. And this recording option is becoming much more common among higher end DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. And when we move to 420, which is the most common option among consumer level DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, you once again have the brightness information of all pixels being recorded as shown by the four. Like in the last example, the first two tells us that the color information of only two of the pixels in the top row is being recorded, and those colors are now being copied to the adjacent pixels. But when it comes to the bottom row, the zero tells us that no color information is being recorded from any of the pixels. Instead, the color information from the top pixels is now being copied to the pixels below. This chroma sampling is only saving 25% of the original color that the camera sees, but it saves a lot of space and is barely noticeable in most cases. At first glance, it may seem like 422 and 420 color sampling would result in a lot of blocky pixels with the same color, but I was showing these examples with the brightness at the same level. So when we consider that each pixel would still have its own luma value or brightness value, now we see various shades of that same color that's being copied from the other pixels. So now the blockiness and the changes from the original color don't look quite as drastic. So obviously having more of the original color information being recorded is better for image quality, but if our eyes can barely notice the difference between 422 and 420, then why would you care about having the higher specs and taking up more space? Well, there are some cases, like when working with green screen, where using the camera's ability to separate one color from the rest will make a huge difference. If you have low color sampling, your final product may end up having a jagged outline with a slight green hue around it, rather than having a smooth mask on the green section of your footage. And having more accurate color information always comes in handy if you plan on doing a lot of heavy color grading to your footage. 
But if you just plan on uploading to Facebook or YouTube, then using 8-bit 420 video is just fine and will save a lot of space. But if you're doing paid video work and you have the option of 422, then I would suggest using that to provide the best possible quality for your clients. So if you have a new camera like the Sony a7S III, Panasonic's GH5, or Canon's R5 or R6, you now have the option to record 422 internally. But even if you only have the option of recording 420 internally, you may still be able to record 422 through an HDMI cable to an external recorder like the Atomos Ninja 5. Many cameras like the EOS R and the a7 III have this option, so check your manual and see what's available on your camera. And finally, keep in mind that recording at the highest possible bit depths and color resolutions won't automatically make your footage look good. You really need to practice those skills in lighting, framing, and storytelling to really make your videos look great. But as always, if this video is helpful, then please help me out by leaving a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you soon.